All right, so finally, we're ready to work on the detail of the brain. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to teach you the basics of it, then I'm going to speed through it so you don't have to watch me um, go slowly through doing all the detail on the brain, okay? So first, this is where all the fun comes in for doing all the, um, the zombie effect, okay? So first what we want to do is make sure this is add and set to space, that's good. Go down to curve and we want it to be set to um, probably like that, okay? So when we add it in, it has a nice sharp curve, okay? Next, we want to make sure it's small enough, okay? Somewhere around the same size as the brain goo. <laughs> if you don't mind me calling the brain that. And um, then we just start adding in the detail, okay? So looking at the brain over here, we get an idea of how the brain goes. So, but the main thing is just go with um, whatever you think looks like a brain. Because who's going to be going, hey, your anatomy on your zombies wrong. So, all right. So just find the right intensity, the right size, and sculpt away. All right. Now I'm going to sculpt in a little bit of detail here for a brain and I want to make sure you change the size of your brush every now and then just so you get that idea of it, um, the organs being squashed together and changing sizes, okay? Nothing too drastic. All right, so the main thing you want to do now is you want to go in with the crease tool after that and actually might even be better is um, we're about ready to add our final level of subdivision so we subdivide it again and um, then we go in here we make sure our draw brush is small enough and set to subtraction and then we subtract that in there we can get that extra level of detail there thing is um, you want it to not be too obvious. Okay. Then after you add that level of um, indentation, you can even go further by adding crease and creasing in that area even more, which brings the vertices closer together and adds even more detail. So that's about what the final look will be. Now I'm going to go over the entire brain on this side and this side and add in all that detail with those three different layers of detail. Now one thing to keep in mind though is um, you'll probably be good to add in the basic detail like this on level four and then go in and add all the other detail after that. Now you notice when you go All right, so finally, we're ready to work on the detail of the brain. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to teach you the basics of it, then I'm going to speed through it so you don't have to watch me um, go slowly through doing all the detail on the brain, okay? So first, this is where all the fun comes in for doing all the, um, the zombie effect, okay? So first, what we want to do is make sure this is add and set to space, that's good go down to curve and we want it to be set to um, probably like that okay so when we add it in it has a nice sharp curve okay next we want to make sure it's small enough okay somewhere around the same size as the brain goo <laughs> if you don't mind me calling the brain that and um, then we just start adding in the detail okay so looking at the brain over here we get an idea of how the brain goes. So, but the main thing is just go with um, whatever you think looks like a brain. Because who's going to be going, hey, your anatomy on your zombies wrong. So, all right. So just find the right intensity, 
the right size and sculpt away. All right, now I'm gonna sculpt in a little bit of detail here for a brain and wanna make sure you change the size of your brush every now and then just so you get that idea of it, um, the organs being squashed together and changing sizes, okay? Nothing too drastic. All right, so the main thing you wanna do now is you wanna go in with the crease tool after that and actually, might even be better, is um, we're about ready to add our final level of subdivision. So we subdivide it again and um, then we go in here and we make sure our draw brush is small enough and set to subtraction and then we subtract that in there. We can get that extra level of detail there. Thing is, um, we want it to not be too obvious. Okay. Then after you add that level of um, indentation, you can even go further by adding crease and creasing in that area even more, which brings the vertices closer together and adds even more detail. So that's about what the final look will be. Now I'm going to go over the entire brain on this side and this side and add in all that detail with those three different layers of detail. Now one thing to keep in mind though is um, you'll probably be good to add in the basic detail like this on level four and then go in and add all the other detail after that. Now you notice when you go down a level that sometimes you get this weird striping effect. Um, I don't know how exactly to fix this except by smoothing it and um, making sure on your project that whatever layer you add you always make sure that's your top layer and never try to render a layer lower because you'll get the striping effect. Um, that's one of the issues with Blender's current sculpting tools and multi-resolution is you get the striping effect which you have to smooth out if you um, if you consistently go back down to a lower level. Um, another thing about Blender is you have to be very careful to conserve your amount of vertices and their placement. So it's pretty even overall on the placement of the vertices if you look at it. Um, it's pretty even. But um, with a program like 3D Coat that works with voxels, you will not have to worry about that. Um, so that's, that's a upside of using something like 3D Coat. But the nice thing about using Blender for sculpting is you can use Blender and then um, for sculpting, and then you can retopologize it in Blender, and then you can go on and use the um, UV Unwrap tools, and you can paint on the textures. You can go straight over to lighting and rendering and animation and rigging all in one application. So that's a, that's a big plus there to be able to do the animation and rigging all in one program, um, along with the sculpting and retopology tools. Um, the other thing um, is you could use Sculptress, which is currently under the wing of Pixel Logic, but um, that is an awesome program. But currently, we're using Blender, and so I'm going to finish the tutorial and teach you how to model in the rest of the brain. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the sculpting. There's one last thing I want to do before I speed ahead and do that is down the center you'll notice there's this big ridge so you want to make sure you get that detail in there now I'm going to be adding that detail even more on the second level on the uh, level 5 subdivision but we want to make sure that ridge down the middle is there because that is going to add um, a bit more realism to your mesh and um, you see it gets wider towards the, the back and we're going to do that once we get there but um, you want to make sure you have that ridge because that's one of the defining points of what a brain looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through this and I'll be right back with you.